Hello everyone, welcome back to the Cronia region. This is the series where I explain what would happen in the hypothetical Pokemon games, Pokemon Agate and Pokemon Obsidian. Games which don't actually exist, but if they did, would be based on my ideas of what a Scottish themed region with bits of Canada in it would look like. When filling out my decks, I decided to do what a lot of Fakemon creators tend to do. And that's the fun challenge of trying to come up with a Pokemon for every unused type combination. And in this video, we're going through half of them. Yeah, there's a lot of fake mon to cover. Although half of these unused type combinations will have brand new evolutionary lines attached to them, and the other half being attached to regional variants, both parts of this duology will have a mix of both. It took a while and a load of revisions for my decks, but now I'm 100% satisfied with most of my decks and I'm ready to show you these. Also, some type combinations that haven't been used by Game Freak I'm using multiple times. As will be evident by the fact that there is another fairy fighting Pokemon in this video. Despite the fact that Priterate is already that type combination. Also, since this video is going out before the release of Pokemon Scarlet and Violet, and since it's being recorded before any Pokemon have been announced that may or may not have this type combination, these two videos will contain type combinations which haven't been used as of Pokemon Legends Arceus. Funny story, I've been planning this region since 2020, and back then we didn't have a ghost normal type, and now we do. But I had planned one even before we found out about Hisuian, Zoro, and Zoroark. Even before we found out about Pokemon Legends Arceus. Since this type combination now has been used, I'm not going to be covering it in this video. One more thing before I begin. I did want to use more rare type combinations that have only been used by alternate battle forms such as Megas or the different Rotom form forms or whatever, as well as Legendaries, but those aren't unused. They have been used, but are just rarer. So they'll be covered in relevant videos for those Pokemon, and not here. As evident by the fact that I have a Fire Steel Pokemon as one of my starters, um, even though the only previous Fire Steel Mon was Heatran, but I'm not covering it in this video. I'm not covering it in either of these videos. I'm just stating that before anyone's like, ooh, you should make an Electric Ice Mon or something like that. Like, Electric Fire is a better example, darn it. <laughs> so, as of Gen 8, there have been 16 unused type combinations. In this video, I'll be covering eight of them. Four of said type combinations will be brand new, four of them will be regional variants. Starting off, we have the regional bug. It'll represent the bug dark typing, which I'm genuinely surprised hasn't been done before. However, like some other fake one in this video, one or two stages may not actually have this type combination. Heck, the first two stages of this line aren't bug dark. But anyways, let's get into it. Meet Tatty Pillar! This line was done by Ryoma Art, who also did the Buttercup line, which is my grass starry line. The name Tatty Pillar comes from Tatty, which is a Scots word which means potato, and caterpillar. Potato caterpillars are a thing, and that made me think of a chip. Or a french fry if you're more familiar with the way Americans call it. I imagined one wriggling around like a caterpillar, so I decided to go down the pun route, as opposed to the literal animal route. Potatoes are a big thing in Scotland, actually. Not as big as they are in Ireland, of course, but there's a popular dish you have alongside meals called neeps and tatties, which is essentially mashed turnips and mashed potatoes. Yeah, we don't just eat haggis, you know. There hasn't been a potato-themed Pokemon either, and making a potato caterpillar did kind of fit in with that, but I wanted this line to also have the Scottish theming, and making a potato caterpillar did kind of fit with what I wanted from this line but also the Scottish-themed setting. Also, it's cute as heck! The pupa stage is called Crispolis, which I must thank Ryoma for the name as well. I was originally going to call it Pupato, which I really liked, but Crispolis is better. It comes from Crisp, which is what we call potato chips over here, and Chrysalis, which is what the pupil stage of bugs surround themselves with. Yeah, there's nothing much to mention here. It's shaped like a potato, and it's wrapped itself in crisps slash potato chips. The antennae are chips slash french fries too, as they were in the first stage. Now, Crispolis evolves using a new method called the Special Rod. Okay, I have to explain this. It's not the region's gimmick, just a new evolution method that also has battle uses. It's a held item which stores the typing of any special attack that comes the Pokemon holding the Special Rod's way, regardless of immunity. Although, if the attack misses, then I don't think it should store it. So, if Bubble Beam was used against a Pokemon, then the Special Rod would store a Water Charge. Or if Hex was used against a normal type that had the Special Rod, 
then a ghost charge would be held. This typed charge is stored after that, and can be used outside of battle, but any special attack used while there is a charge would still hit as normal. The charge is lost when the attack that the special world is mapped to, which will now be the store type, is used. So if the flamethrower was like the third slot or something, and the special rod held a water charge, flamethrower would become a water type move. A charge could also trigger an evolution, which would also lose the charge since the Pokemon would kind of absorb that energy. Crispolis, for example, would evolve when its special rod has a dark charge, which would then allow it to evolve into... Jack of Terror! Rion helped me with the name too, however I took his suggestion and tweaked it slightly. His suggestion combined Jacket with Lepidoptera, the order of insects that moths are a part of. I decided to add the word Terror in the name, since it's a dark type now. The jacket part contains the word Jack, which is also a name. This Pokemon also very loosely references Springkeel Jack, who is an entity part of British folklore during the 19th century, mainly in suburban London, the English Midlands, and, more importantly, Scotland. Jack appeared human but acted more than human, being able to jump great heights while terrorising the public. He also, at a closer look, had a more demonic physique, as well as a gothic sense of style, as well as red eyes. If he reminds you of Mothman, a 20th century cryptid from West Virginia, that's why I decided to also give off Mothman vibes, with those red eyes, cloak, and dark typing referencing both. So yes, it's a moth. In its lore, that you can find on the Cronia Region's Instagram account, we know that other moth Pokemon are attracted to light, but Jack of Terror is attracted to the absence of light darkness and shadows, which is why it's a dark type, but also it's not very nice since it eats people's clothes. This ties into its design. Potato moths are a thing, not as much in Scotland, but remember, this is more of a reference to potatoes and I wanted a moth and it's sort of a pun. Jacket potatoes, which is where the jacket part of its name comes from as well as Springkill Jack, are also a thing. Jackets are a type of clothing, and moths are known to eat clothing and leave holes in them. So, although there's not really a scientific way for it to continue to fly, it has holes in its jacket potato-like wings. Its wings also blend in with its hood, which makes it look a bit like a gangster, and jackets also tend to have hoods. Not all of them do, but quite a few do. I love this design, and I hope you guys do too. Also, the shinies of this whole line are based on sweet potatoes, hence the orange. And the purple on Jacket Terror references Japanese sweet potatoes. So for normal poison, I immediately thought of Plague Rat, which is funny in an ironic sense because around the time I commissioned this line, I caught COVID. And since there's already a rat Pokemon, what better than to introduce Cronio's first regional variant, a variant of what is likely the first regional variant players encountered, Rattata. This whole line was done by Dalera region on Instagram, by the way. It is just sick for the moment. The brown coloration is because I felt like swapping Rattata and Raticate's regular colors and shiny worked for the design concept and the skull on its head is foreshadowing where this line is going. Crony and Raticate is now dying, with off-coloured spots and weird growths. The plague is worsening, but hey, the swapped colours work better for this design, since the base colours are purple, which are the poison colours, and the shiny is green, which is now sort of a secondary colour for the poison type. Yes, the plague aspect is poison, but I must reiterate, it's still a normal rat. It just so happens to have the plague and has poison typing as a result. Heck, Alolan Rattata and Raticate are normal type too, as well as dark, so I don't see what's wrong with normal poison. But anyways, Raticate evolves now. It evolves into Ratakin. The name comes from Rat, obviously, stylized similarly to Raticate, Kin, due to the fact that there's now seemingly multiple entities, and it sounds like Rat King, which Raticin is actually based on. Now, you may be thinking normal ghost, ghost poison? No, it's still normal poison. It's zombie-like corpses doing the fighting. So although the spirit is controlling the body, it would have the defenses of a normal poison type. Although Ratican would have a new ability, Spectre, which allows it to use ghost type stab. So the design having the tails connected is an obvious reference to Rat Kings, and both the body and spirit having crowns, as well as fur on the body resembling a cloak, is a visual pun on the name, and also gives off pantomime vibes considering 
the Rat King is the villain of some pantomimes. As for the corpse and spirit, this is showcasing the fact that the plague has killed this rat, but the spirit has unfinished business. As for the ribs, I felt like this design needed something extra to differentiate it from Raticate, especially since both Ratican and Raticate both share the same colours and shinies. This design is so sick pun intended. I'm really proud of this concept. So the next brand new Pokemon line I have to offer you is Electric Fighting. Funnily enough, Fighting is the only type currently available that hasn't been paired with Electric. Since we have a guaranteed Electric type in each region in the form of a Pikachu clone, why not? Meet Nezumaruto. I commissioned the legendary Dark and Windy for this. The name comes from Nezumi, which means mouse, however is mainly from Hata Nezumi, which means vol, because Nezumaruto is a vol. The name also comes from Boruto, which means vault. I came up with the name as a pun because Vol and Volt sound similar, but because all Pika clones names are in Japanese, I decided to try and fuse the root words translated into Japanese, and I think it works. It's electric type because it's a Pikachu clone. They all are. And no, I don't count Mimikyu or Maril as Pika clones because Mimikyu's concept isn't tied to Pikachu directly and is just as much a Pika clone as Cramorant is in my opinion. And Maril looks nothing like Pikachu, although Nezumaruto Shiny is a reference to the whole Pika Blue misconception. As for the fighting type, well, Nezumaruto isn't actually fighting type, it's monoelectric. So why is it here? Well, if you give it an Aura Stone, Nezumaruto evolves, but before I get into its evolution, what kind of vol is it based on? Answer? The common vol. Nothing special about it. However, there is one particular kind of common vol that loosely inspired its evolution. Meet Nezuken. The name comes from Nezumi and Hatanezumi, like before, as well as Ken, which is a Japanese word for sword. Firstly, there's a lot of words for sword in Japanese, and secondly, you may think Ken means fist, and you'd be right. They are spelt with different kanji though, but both are pronounced Ken. Anyways, I mentioned that there's a particular kind of common vol Nezuken is based on. The particular vol is known as the Orkney vol. Yup, we have a Highlander Pokemon. The Orkney vol is a group of the common vol found in the Orkney Islands, but they're not found in mainland Scotland, but Orkney is a part of Scotland, so it counts. Plus, other voles are found here, so it still works. The Orkney vol are about 10% larger than most common vol, and it's a mystery as to why they're only specifically in Orkney. The accepted theory is that they were just brought to Orkney, and we know it had to be at least 4,600 years ago, since that's when the earliest fossil is dated. So the reason it's fighting type is just that I wanted to use the type combo, but voles can be ruthless, so that could justify it. But as I'm sure you're able to spot, it uses its tail as a sword and an acorn as a shield. Did you know that fencing is the most popular martial art in Scotland? Or at least has been historically? I didn't even know it was classed as a martial art before researching this. The specific kind of sword this is meant to reference is the broadsword, and the shield is meant to be a targ, which is a shield with a spike at the centre, and oh look, the stem of the acorn is like a spike. Some kinds of vol eat acorns. I'm not sure if all do, I just saw an image of a vol with some acorns, and I got inspired. Also, the reds and oranges in both their designs are meant to signify their secondary typing, just like how Todegamaru has grey on it, and how Morpeko has very dark grey on it. And the blue shinies are also meant to represent the colours of the Scottish flag, and Nezuken's pose gives me a SCOTLAND FOREVER! sort of vibe, all Braveheart style. I'm so proud of how this design turned out. So, my second ever regional variant line I'm going to show off also had one before. It doesn't help that it was also a regional rodent. Meet Cronian Zigzagoon and Cronian Linoon. The art for the whole line was done by Pokemachi on Instagram and they turned out so well. They are a normal steel type because they are still the regular mammal but they're wearing scrap metal as a sort of armor, so they are steel type. When trying to come up with ideas for a normal steel type, I felt that Sigzagoon's fur pattern reminded me of scrap metal. That's the only reason this design idea happened. Also, the Galarian Zigzagoon line is one of my favorite Pokemon lines, so I guess I'm biased. By the way, their shinies are based on rusted metal. To justify their less than happy personality, it's because the Cronians consider them to be pests, and that makes them sad. They just want friends! So instead of the fame and fortune of the Galarian variants, which are still the originals by the way, they now live rough lives and live on the streets and scrapyards. Unfortunately, Scotland does have a homelessness problem, and it has been here for a while. Luckily, you could become its friend and give it a home with you. 
Who knows? You might even get Linoon to evolve. Yes. If you level up Linoon at the Scrapyard location, which you can access after four gym badges, it will evolve into... Scrapoon! It is still normal steel type for similar reasons to Chromian Zigzagoon and Chromian Linoon. Its name comes from Scrap and Raccoon, since all three Pokemon in this evolutionary family that we know about so far are also named after Raccoons. So Scrapoon follows suit. By the way, Zigzagoon and Linoon aren't based on Raccoons, but Raccoon Dogs. Their Galarian counterparts are based on Badgers, and the Cronian versions are now Raccoons, because I say so. Did you know Raccoons are one of the top 50 non-native invasive species in Scotland? Neither did I until I researched it for this design. It is now a scavenger, determined to find precious items thrown away by humans, using its trusty spoon. The shiny is also based on rust, but because the metals changed color, I want the rust on the specific items that were already rusty to be changed to look like oxidized copper, which is turquoise. That is why the eyes in this line shinies are also turquoise to reference this. Oh, and I thought it'd be funny to give it Scrappy as its hidden ability. Now, if you're like me and really like the Galarian forms of these mon, you'd probably miss Obstagoon, but don't worry, I decided to make a regional variant for it too. You can't stop me! Coronian Linoon also has to reach level 35 at night, much like their Galarian counterparts, to evolve into Coronian Obstagoon, which is now Dark Steel type. My pitch to the artist was a regional Obstagoon of the same style as the others. Make it Dark Steel and also make it angry, as not only do I think that fits Obstagoon's original punk rocker inspiration, but also is in line with the personality development of the Cronian Zigzagoon line, starring out as sad because no one likes them, only for that sadness to develop into rage. What the artist did without me asking, which I love, was have the rusty old scrap washing machine as armor, which fits in with the theme. It's the right level of subtle slash obvious and thematically contrasts with Obstagoon's new personality since I find it quite comical compared to the anger. I honestly feel like this comical contrast with more serious themes in Pokemon really helps sell the monster that you can be friends with angle that a lot of Pokemon have. And it's a good way to balance out dark type designs which can lean heavy into the typing or other Pokemon based on other serious topics. Ignore how ghost types are the exception, please. I love how not only Cronian Obstagoon, but the whole line turned out. Fire is the only type Grass hasn't been paired with yet, and there seems to be a trope in Pokemon for little guys turning into very feminine designs. There are either two or three stages, but mostly Grass type. Not always, but you can't tell me that Roserade, Lilligant, Whimsicott, Zarina, Eldegoss, and Lilligant again make up the vast majority of these kinds of Pokemon. Since some people can't behave themselves surrounding these Pokemon, why don't I make these supposedly hot creatures and make it literal? But how do you combine these elements? A burning bush or tree? Nah, but I'll keep that in mind for later. A pepper plant? I was going to do that, but I felt it didn't make too much sense for my region. It's also fairly obvious, and there was a lot of speculation about it recently with Fococo, and I'm not against the idea, but I want to do something different. But after a lot of revisions to my decks, I now have two two-stage lines. Let's see what the artist I commissioned, Kai Fake Mons R, on Instagram cooked up for me. Meet Weelass and Janeep, both mono grass type and 100% female. For Weelass, the name comes from Wheat, since that's the crop it's based on, lass, since it's female, and the phrase we lass, which is Scots for little girl, which is what it is. Side note, this is probably the best name I've come up with. Meanwhile, Janeep comes from Neep, which is Scots for turnip, and the fact that it begins with J is more referencing jack-o'-lanterns, which I'll get into more when it evolves. But I guess it sounds like the name Jane too. They're just little guys, or little girls? You know what I mean. They're the budgies, petalils, and smallives of the region. But once you give them the firestone, you get their evolved forms. Let's start by evolving Wheelass, into Bunty! The name comes from Bun, a type of bread, Bonnie, which is Scots for happy, since it's now a Bonnie lass, and Bounty, since it's now a Bounty Hunter. Yeah, I did have inspiration from Samus around from the Metroid series, but she's amazing. Also, Bunty is now bread. Why is this? Well, there are many kinds of bread found in Scotland that are very unique here, such as plain bread, Baps, which I know are British as a whole but originated in Scotland, Butteries, and Bannock. I also felt that making a bread Pokemon not only does it feel Scottish to me, but there also hasn't been one yet. As for Grass Fire as its type, you make bread through dough with natural ingredients, mainly from plants, and you bake it with heat. 
That doesn't necessarily mean it has the heat anymore, but it does. As you can see, it shoots fire out of its toasty arm cannons. Janip evolves into Lanternip, which is Lantern and Turnip. Did you know that before pumpkins were used as jack-o'-lanterns, people tended to use turnips? due to their accessibility? That's what this Pokemon references, with the fire type representing the internal flames used in jack-o'-lanterns. But why go with this at all? Well, when I was discussing Tatty Pillar, I mentioned that a popular Scottish side dish is Neeps and Tatties, and I felt like I couldn't have one without the other. The Tatty Pillar line are the Tatties, and now the Janeep line are the Neeps. Now, I did consider making this a regional variant of the Pump Kaboo line, and the fact that they were pumpkins didn't stop me, since the word sand didn't stop the Alolan Sandshrew line, I just feel like it would have been better to have it as its own separate design, if possibly related, as that meant I was less limited in designing it. Like how she's got a hood cloak thing. To me, this evokes something akin to Little Red Riding Hood, which fits since I asked Kai to give it fairy tale vibes. In case you haven't noticed, there's more going on here. I wanted to push an agenda that pulled the focus of making weirdly feminine designs. Women don't have to be these stereotypically feminine creatures, they can be more masculine, like Bunty, and they don't have to be conventionally attractive, which is why I had a sort of ugly stepsister approach for Lanternip. I find this to be good! Not everything has to be like Roserade, Lilligan, or Zarina. They also represent two parental archetypes. The breadwinner, which is the money earner of the family, typically the only one, which is also stereotypically masculine. Bounty hunters earn a lot, tend to go life solo, and even seen as a masculine role to the point that Samus being revealed as a woman was a major twist in the first Metroid game. Bunty is all of this represented in a Pokemon, and is made out of bread, so it's a pun. Meanwhile, Lanternip's more of a housewife, stay-at-home sort of deal. I mean, you leave jack-o'-lanterns outside your house! It's an old-fashioned and nowadays sexist expectation of a woman's role in society. As a result of this duality, they're version exclusive. Since Pokemon Agate symbolizes the past, Lanternip is exclusive to that game while Bunty is exclusive to Pokemon Obsidian due to it symbolizing the future. This also works due to the respective fairy tale and sci-fi inspirations of both also representing the past and future. Also, the grass gym leader, Fig, will have a member of either of these lines as their ace. Which line it will be will depend on the version. It will be the opposite one to the obtainable one in that game. Oh, and the shinies are based on flour, whole wheat bread, different kinds of turnips, and the colour of mashed neeps. But yeah, I love these lasses. So, I know Priatorate is also fairy fighting, but I wanted this type for a Pokemon that isn't legendary. This one's another regional variant, but it doesn't start out as this type combination. The third regional variant is yet another regional rodent, that being a Patrat variant. I did kind of go overboard with that, admittedly. I'm even planning a fourth, but it's not going to be in this video or another video for a while. I got Teal Drum on Instagram to do all of this line, by the way. Cronium Patrat is based on a trainee police officer and his fighting type. Scotland was actually one of the first countries to adopt a police force as we know it today. As was Canada. The reason why I want a police Pokemon is for multiple reasons. Officer Jenny should get a new Pokemon that isn't just Growlithe, and the police do play a larger role in the story. More on that when I cover the plot, eventually. At level 20, much like its Unovan counterpart, Cronium Patra evolves into Cronium Watchog. It's no longer a trainee and ready to enforce the law using its bat tail. It even looks more like a police officer with its hat-like head and patterns on its torso resembling a uniform, similar to how Unovan Watchogs appears to be a safety vest. Cronium Watchog is also mono-fighting as well, and that is because it's not quite fully formed into what it will become. Much like Cronium Linoon, there is a split evolution, but unlike Cronium Linoon, this split it's two forms of the same Pokemon, like Meowstic or Lycanroc. Instead of the method being tied to gender or the time of day, I'm basing it on which evolutionary stone it uses. No new one this time, since it's a new form that's evolving. So I have access to all the established ones. Meet Myriot. The name comes from Meerkat and Riot. Also, I think pronouncing it as Myriot, Myriot, or anything like that is okay. It should be Myriot, but I find Myriot easier to say. Anyways, the form of Myriot you can see on screen right now is called the Sheriff form. It's fighting dark and is obtained by giving Cronium Watchog a shiny stone, referencing the thematic shiny new badge it got, since it has a promotion. It's based on police officers that are sent to deal with protesters. This one's a political commentary Pokemon. It exists to tie into the story of Agate and Obsidian. If you're not comfortable with the ACAB angle, I have two things to say. The first is that 
The sheriff form and most of the Chromium police force are meant to represent the corrupt side of the police, something that I think most of us can agree upon as being bad. But the second thing I have to say is that the other evolution, although not directly being based on this, can be seen as a good cop. Marriott's protester form is Fighting Fairy, which is why I'm covering it in this video. It is obtained by giving Chromium Watchdog a Dawnstone, because it's dawned on the Pokémon that what it believed was right has been corrupted, and is joining the fight, as in the protests, to stop corruption throughout. There is a clear stat difference between the two as well, because Sheriff Form Marriott was honing its combat skills, its attack stats are higher than its defenses, and because Protester Form Marriott is using its honed skills to defend the rights of it and its allies, this is the other way around. So yeah, that's Crony Patchrack, Crony Watchog, and Myriad. Normal Ice next, and I thought the obvious choice was to go for a Husky, which could double as this region's dog Pokemon. Sure, Huskies aren't really a Scottish thing, however, this region's also based on Canada. Plus, there will be some stuff in this overall design that will tie more into Scotland. So, without further ado, meet Pupski! It's so cute! I commissioned Cosmic Fakemon on Instagram for this line, by the way, and the name comes from Pup, Husky, and Ski. That last part makes it sound more Eastern European, which will make sense later, even though it makes it sound Slavic as opposed to Scandinavian. Anyways, the Ski part also references a recreational activity it likes to do. Skiing! Its ice paws act as skis. Skiing isn't particularly a Scottish or Canadian thing. Sure, it's fairly popular to do in Canada, but breathing is fairly popular to do there too, so I don't think it's a strong enough link. But remember how I said there's Scandinavian influences earlier? Well, skiing evolved from a Scandinavian practice. Sources debate if it was practiced in China first, however, so that could be wrong. But there's still a connection to the overall theme, but it's essentially just a normal puppy, so normal type. It also lives in icy conditions and has a few ice powers and properties, so also ice type. Pupski evolves into Glacier. Name comes from Glacier, Racer, and Fenrir. The legs are now completely made out of ice, because it's like a bobsled, or I guess just a sled since huskies are known for pulling sleds. That's also why there's rope tied onto its torso. The rope is made of ice magic, but that's not the sole reason the rope's there. It's also based on Fenrir, a wolf in Norse mythology who was also a son of Loki. In fact, Fenrir was actually foretold to kill Odin during Ragnarok. The ropes are meant to reference Fenrir's imprisonment, but anyways, this is more of a loose connection for this fake one. Wolves used to be found in Scotland and may be reintroduced. Also, this fake one isn't literally literally or primarily based on Fenrir. It's still just a wolf with ice powers. Also, I really like the shiny. Both it and Pupski shinies are based on brown huskies and wolves. One last thing, Gracier is the first Pokemon to have this new ability, Shock Absorb. Much like many other abilities before it, it grants the Pokemon immunity to a type of move. In this case, it's fighting. I've got a few Pokemon with this ability. Most of them have a four times weakness to fighting. Normal Ice as a type combination doesn't give it any defensive favors. Neither does Normal Rock, which I'll talk about in the next video. Normal Steel has a 4 times weakness, but Steel is such a good type anyways, so that's why I didn't give the Cronin Zigzagoon line this ability. But yeah, I hope you enjoy these good boys. So with this last one, I had a mission. I wanted to make one of the least popular Pokemon designs, one that even I don't like, into something that I would like, and hopefully something that you will enjoy too. Now don't get me wrong, Crabominable has a very interesting design concept that I actually love. A Yeti Crab that's also a Yeti! That's so cool! Too bad it looks like, well, that. I want to tone down the ugly factor to a degree where it at least isn't all ugly, but I also wanted it to tie into Cronio. Brown Crab is a common species of crab in Scotland, but that simply isn't enough, so I gave it a general Mud Crab inspiration, tying it in with Mud Sports as well, which are popular in Scotland, and replaced the ice type with ground. Meet Cronian Crabominable. Yeah, it isn't much of a looker either, but I like it. It's a little ugly, but looks like it could definitely do some serious damage, which is the sort of balance an uglier Pokemon should have. I commissioned PokerJmon on Instagram to do this, and funnily enough, it was the first Mon in this video that I got commissioned. He actually likes Crabominable's ugliness, so I think this was a perfect collaboration where we could change the aspects of its design I don't like, while also appeasing the fans of this Pokemon by keeping its identity, give or take its core design concept. I wanted its mouth to be more closed than the original, as well as to make it look more like a crab. Also, low spikes, it's not hair, is actually the ridges that most crabs tend to have at the edges of their shell. I did want Cronin Crabominable to 
to keep some aspects of Crabrawler, which is the same old mono fighting crab boy, those being the general purple colour scheme, the hair, and blue boxing gloves. Well, neither Alolan or Chromium Abominable have boxing gloves, but they have something blue around the same area. The shinies also carry over the changes that shiny Crabrawler has, purple remaining the same, the hair changing to whatever colour this is, and the blue parts becoming red. Unlike Alolan Crabominable, Chromium Crabominable has one more change in its shiny to make it a good shiny. The brown turns orange, which makes it look more like a crab, and a Scottish caveman. But this was simply because I felt the shade of orange Jay wanted to have originally, instead of the blue, which I told him to turn blue instead, would have been good to replace the brown in its shiny, due to the observations I previously made about how it looked. But that's it for this video! How do you feel about the unused type combinations themselves, as well as the Pokemon I've introduced to cover those? Well, the ones I've spoken about so far, anyways. Before this video closes, I shall do a recap of all of the different egg groups that all of these Pokemon will be a part of. Just like I did for the second set of starters' this video. It will be important for the region's gimmick, which I do need to explain at some point, but I'm not ready to. I didn't do it in the last video because, unless if there is a really interesting exception, pretty much all legendary Pokemon don't have an egg group or are put into the undiscovered egg group, so I just thought it would have been assumed. But if you needed that clarified for whatever reason, they're all in undiscovered. As for the Pokemon discussed in this video, although some regional variants in Chronio will have additional egg groups added onto them, for the most part, um, they're just going to be the same as the old ones, and all the ones in this video will just be the same as their original versions. And since all additions to an evolutionary family always tend to share the same egg group as the rest of them, bar baby Pokemon, that's still going to apply here. But anyways, uh, enough rambling, I'm going to quick fire these. Let's go! Tatipilla, Crispilus, and Jakaterra are in the Bug group. Rattata, Raticate, and Ratikin are in Field. Nezumuruto and Nezuken are in Field and Fairy. Sigscoon, Linoon, Scrapoon, and Obscoon are in Field. Wheelass and Bunty are in Grass, as are Janip and Lanternip. Patrat, Watchog, and Myriot are all in Field. Pupskin, Gracier are in Field and Monster. And Crabrawler and Crabominable are in Water 3. Now remember to like, comment, subscribe, and share, and ring the notification bell. Check out the Chronio Region's Instagram account, and I will see you next time to cover the remaining unused type combinations. See you guys then. Cheerio! I must thank Formiga Fakemon for the art for the special rod and the aura stone.